In our discussion about loads, we talked about where dead loads and live loads come from. They come from standards, by the way. So now that we know what the loads are, we need to distribute them to the beams, girders, and columns. And we do that with tributary loadings. Buildings are made up of layers. So we've got columns, and then between the columns we have girders, and the girders are supporting smaller beams, and those beams are supporting a flooring or decking system. So this whole system is distributing loads to each different layer. We're going to talk about two different systems, a one-way system and a two-way system. Here is my lovely building. You see my turquoise floor decking, and then I have my beam and girder system. This is a one-way system. I've got my flooring. That distributes onto my beams, that then distribute onto my girders, that pass along to the columns. So this deck, beam, girder, and column layering is one one-way system. We can also have a one-way system if we have concrete all on the same level, but it is only reinforced in one direction. The last option, according to the American Concrete Institute, is if we have a span ratio greater than two, it could also act as a one-way slab. What's a span ratio? Well, that's the span between the beams versus the span between the girder. So if the girder spacing is greater than twice the beam spacing, then we can consider this a single or a one-way slab. Let's take, for example, this one-way system, meaning the beams are stacked on top of the girders that are supporting a deck, and the deck load over the entire system that I did not draw is 100 PSF. Okay, so I've got a real just sketch of the beam and girder. I want to find the load diagrams for all the beams and girders. So because it's a one-way system, the load is going to want to go to the beam from halfway all the way on out. So between the beams is a five foot spacing. So this is going to be 2.5 feet. And then the other half is going to go the other way to this middle beam that I've labeled CD. So that means coming down here, my outside beams are only getting one distribution of that load. Two and a half feet of 100 pounds per square foot is going to A, B, and E, F. So going from the top view to the now elevation or side view of beam AB or EF, we've created a distributed load of 2.5 feet of 100 pounds per square foot acting onto that beam. So 2.5 times 100 is 250 pounds per linear foot. So now this looks like something that we've seen in statics and solids, where we have a beam that is supported and it's holding a distributed load of 250 pounds per foot. Now the middle beam is going to be a little bit different because it's getting that load from either side. So it's doubling up on the length, right? Beam CD is still 2.5 feet times 100 pounds per square foot, but now it's two of that because I've got one from either side coming in. So it's experiencing 500 pounds per linear foot of distributed load. Next is our girders. So our girders are drawn here in green and what are they experiencing? They're experiencing load contact points at B, D, and F, and A, C, and E. So what does that look like? That's going to look like this girder right here where I've got three point loads where those beams are attaching at A, C, and E. The magnitudes for those point loads are going to come from our beams with their evenly distributed loads that are symmetrically loaded and symmetrically supported. 
So AB is going to have reactions of 1,250 pounds on either side. And beam CD is doubling that because it's got load coming in from either side. So its reactions are going to be 2,500 pounds at either end. So transferring that down to our girder, we are going to have 1,250 pounds at A, 2,500 pounds at C, and 1,250 pounds at E, where the beam contacts the girder. Our second decking distribution is a two-way system. So this is where the beams and girders are all on the same level, drawn wonderfully here by my rendering in black and blue. But it is a two-way system because the beams and girders are all on the same level. And what happens here? Well, now since everything's on the same level, it's going to get distributed out in all four directions. And to keep the even distribution, everything here is at a 45 degree angle. This system can also be a two-way system if span two, the span ratio, span two and span one is less than or equal to two, according to the American Concrete Institute. Let's say we have this horribly drawn decking system in black where the beams and girders are all on the same level. They are holding a four inch thick reinforced lightweight concrete deck in addition to a 500 PSF live load, LL live load. I want to sketch the load on members BE, which is that horizontal member in the middle, and FED, which is that member into the page on the right. Now I've started by saying that this was a two-way system, but remember if our span ratio is greater than two, then we can treat it as a one-way system. So I'm going to check my span ratio. L2 over L1 needs to be less than or equal to two to be a two-way system. So L2 is 10 feet, L1 is 7.5 feet, and this is equal to 1.33333, which is definitely less than or equal to 2. So this is a two-way system. So the next thing I'm going to draw is the tributary area of each uh, decking to the beam and girder. So looking here from my top view, I have a 10 foot width and my two seven and a half foot spans and each tributary area to be even going out in all directions, it's 45 degrees, right? That's splitting those 90 degree corners in half. Because this isn't a square floor plan, that means it's gonna meet up on the short side before it meets up on the long side. So halfway of 7.5 is 3.75. So if I were to draw that on the long side, I'm going to have 3.75 feet coming from the right, 3.75 feet coming from the left. And what's my middle bit? That's a great question. Well, if it's 10 foot and we have 3.75 coming from either direction, that means that middle piece is that remainder two and a half feet drawn completely to scale. Okay, so there is my distribution as it goes from the center and oozes out in all four directions at a 45 degree angle. So what we're seeing here is on our member in question BE is where I'm going to start we have this trapezoidal distributed load coming to BE. Now that we know how the load is going to be distributed to member BE, we need to talk about what load is distributed to member BE. Because up here we have a dead load for the concrete and a live load that was given to us. 
So our total load is going to be the live load of 500 PSF and then the dead load of 8 PSF for the concrete times the 4 inch depth that we were given with a total load of 532 pounds per square foot for the system. I want to find these maximum values on member BE. And remember, BE is in the middle, so I'm going to have 3.75 coming from the top and 3.75 coming from the bottom with the way that I've drawn this top view, which makes a total length of 7.5. So my height here is going to be 532 PSF times that span length of 7.5 feet, which is going to give me a maximum value of 3,990 pounds per foot is my maximum value for my trapezoidal load on member BE. Okay, that's the middle member BE. Member AF and CD are going to be half that because they're only getting distributed load from one side. But we're not asking about those, so we're going to ignore it. So there's my distributed load on member BE. The other one it asked for was girder FED. And I've got my girder sketched here. Now coming back up to my top view, what do I have going on here distributed to FED? Well, I have these two triangular loads coming on to FED, as well as the point loads from beams AF, BE, and CD. So I need to represent all of that on my free body diagram. And the maximum value for my distributed load coming from that decking is going to be 3.75 feet times that 532 pounds per square foot, which is equal to 2,000 pounds per foot. That's going to be the maximum value at those two distributed load peaks. Then I have my point loads from the supports on the beams. The resultant force of a distributed load is the area under the curve. So if I have a trapezoid here, the area of my trapezoid is going to be 2.5 plus 10 divided by 2. So there's my two lengths and their average times the load 3,990, so there's the total load under my curve for a trapezoid, and then I'm dividing it by 2 because half of it's going to B and half of it's going to E, so that is equal to 12,500 pounds. So knowing that EY and BY both equal to 12,500 pounds, we can come down here and plug that in as the point load that is touching at E, 12,500 pounds, okay? And then remember that AF and CD are carrying half the load of BE, so that means that'll be 6,250 pounds on either of those sides. And that is going to be our free body diagram for girder FED. So here we are given the support system for a floor in a single family dwelling. We've got beams that are 12 foot length and 4 foot spacing. Find the load diagram for beam CF and girder ABCD. So I'm just given that this is a single family dwelling and I'm not given any materials. So that tells me that my load is going to be the live load which is 40 pounds per square foot, and this is from table 1.4 of your book. So now that we have that load, the question is how do we distribute it? Well, from this diagram, um, I'm going to assume that everything's on the same level, so it could be a one-way or a two-way system. So let's do our span ratio, so L2 over L1, is equal to 12 feet divided by 4 feet, and that is equal to 3. 3 is greater than 2, so this is a one-way system. And it makes sense because it gets to a point where this is so narrow that if we do the little triangles, they just get so shallow that that's why it just kind of goes away. 
So as a one-way system, that means we're going to half this. So this will be two feet and two feet, and they are going to come towards CF. And I'm just doing CF here, but that applies to all of them. Where CF and BG get loads from both sides, DE and AH only get a load from one side. So if I were to draw member CF, so with the one way, we're gonna have an evenly distributed load all the way across beam CF. And it is going to have a magnitude of that given live load, 40 PSF times the span two uh, CF, which is going to be 2 plus 2, that is 4 feet, 160 pounds per linear foot, symmetrically loaded, symmetrically supported, so where this beam contacts the girder at points C and F, that's going to be 160 times 12 divided by 2, which is going to be 960 pounds and 960 pounds on either side of C and F. Why do we need that? Because the other thing that it asks us for is girder A, B, C, D. So we have CF contacting that one, BG contacting that, AH, and DE. If it is pushing up on beam CF, it is pushing down on girder A, B, C, D. So that's going to be 960 pounds. Uh, beam BG has the same two-sided load pattern, so it's also going to be 960 pounds. And then we have A and D. Those beams only have one side that is distributing to them, so that means it's going to be half the load that CF and BG experience. So that's going to be 480 pounds on either side. So there is our loading for beam CF and for girder ABCD.